Jungle, Anton Deck, as well as Lionel Richie and the magician Dynamo, are among the celebrities who've made the guest list to the coronation of King Charles on Saturday. The King, of course, will be crowned alongside his second wife, Camilla, who's found it tough to win over the British public, although she's getting there, after being seen as a, a disruptor in the King's first marriage to the People's Princess, Diana. Joining us now is the former private secretary to Diana, Patrick Jefferson, who, of course, has very, very uh, powerful and very fond memories of... Uh, and you're of not... You, as you sat down, you said, I'm not going to take not the pledge do it. of allegiance to the King. And you also have a... You've had a good relationship with the with the king in the past, haven't you? Yes, absolutely. So why not? Well, it's not a personal thing, Richard. This is... It just feels to me un-British. I agree with you. And I think it's divisive. You know, from now on, did you take it, didn't you? <laughs> Immediately, we're off on a divided foot. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not really Do you fear... very unifying. It's also a bit embarrassing, isn't it, to, to sit in your TV lounge, as it were, and say it to the telly. I think already <laughs> there are thousands of people who serve the crown without having to take any fancy oath of allegiance. They just get on with it we just don't in do their that, lives. Do we? we just don't do that. You know, the armed can. forces, the emergency services... We don't need people to tell us, you've got to say right. this. Now, not surprisingly, the concept of Queen Camilla, not even Queen Consort, but Queen Camilla on Saturday, leaves you with mixed feelings, doesn't it? It does. I mean, I've got nothing against Camilla personally. I think, you know, I, I'm sure that, that she does the best she can in the circumstances she finds herself in. My concern, and it's rather more to do, I suppose, with relations between the monarchy and the media, if you look back at the history of Camilla's royal career, I mean, sadly, it's buried in very unhappy roots. Mm. I know that better than anybody, mm -hmm. probably. Um, people would say to me, do you know Camilla? I said, well, no, but I mean, I kind of knew all about her and lived with her because working for Princess Diana, of course you knew about Camilla. Of course you knew the effect that Camilla's existence had on Princess Diana. Well, as you say, you know that better than anybody. And what and how did that... I mean, we, you know, we've watched The Crown, mm. we've seen the interview, we've read the book. You were there in the room with Princess Diana, as she must have explained how yes. she was. But I think what matters more today, and, I mean, there'll be lots of people to say, oh, it was all an awfully long time ago, which is a funny thing to say at the time of a coronation, but... People do say it was a long time ago. We've all got to move on. What concerns me more is the way in which, in order to reinvent Camilla, no longer the secret mistress, no longer Mrs Parker Bowles, but Her Majesty the Queen. Mm -hmm. That's a heck of a journey. What do you think the late Queen would have made of it? Because she made it quite clear before she died that she expected the title to be Queen Consul, not Queen. Yes, and I think, in that sense, um, the late Queen, like the rest of us, has been... <laughs> rather innocently, no doubt, misled about what Camilla was and what she was going to be called and what her future role was going to be. If you look at the history of it, it is a history of, of um, no doubt, benign but very effective half-truths. I was looking just, just yesterday at a cutting from, I think, from the year 2000. Prince Charles's private secretary was complaining to the Press Complaints Commission because they'd written a story saying that Charles was going to marry Camilla and the <laughs> palace was denying it. Mm. And I think this led to <laughs> the start of the idea that um, you can't be absolutely sure something's true until Buckingham Palace has denied it. <laughs> and that whole, that whole culture, yeah. that environment, yeah. where people couldn't believe what the palace was telling them, and I think we're seeing the hangover of that now with people's very, very reserved uh, views about Camilla. Just today's poll... She's on 39% uh, positive view. Diana's on 63. Mm. You know, the top three people, two of them are dead. Mm. What do you think is going to happen on and just after Saturday? Because we have a sort of a, a habit in this country, don't we, of sneering a little bit um, and being a little bit, um, oh, I don't care that much, about these big, big state occasions. And then when they happen, we go mad for them. We <laughs> go absolutely mad for them. Do you think it's going to be the same with, with the coronation? Oh, yes. I mean, monarchy, royalty is theatre. Yeah. I mean, it is the visible part of the Constitution. I live in America now, and it, what people miss in America is this idea of uh, the pomp and circumstance. People love it. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've got a military background. I love seeing uh, the, uh, the services out doing their yeah. wonderful, fantastic um, uh, duty. I mean, and it's a very tough duty on the day. So people will, of course, enjoy the spectacle. I will enjoy it. It is a wonderful thing. It is a constitutional celebration. Look, we've got a new head of state. And there wasn't a riot. There's no tear gas, mm. no water cannon. It's all just happened. And, OK, it's not a popularity contest. It's not even democratic. But it suits the British system. Yeah. Do, you, do you think the monarchy 
is... I mean, Owen suggested that polls show that it is not going to last many more decades. Do you think so? <laughs> well, I'm a lot older than Richard, but I can remember the Silver ju Stuff the Jubilee. Do you remember Stuff yes, the Jubilee? Yes, I do remember that, actually. I mean, yes, is, yeah, yeah. There, there have always been opponents. I mean, Charles I had his head chopped off you in did. Whitehall. Yeah. So, you know, it, it <laughs> can happen again. Such Not perhaps the execution, <laughs> but... <laughs> if, Interesting caveat. <laughs> if, <laughs> not perhaps the execution, <laughs> but yeah. if, if the royal family lost mm. public support significantly, yeah. that would be reflected in politics. I must ask you this mm. before we run out of time. If we could bring Diana back for a while, what would she make of what's happened with Harry? What would she say about it, do you think? Mm. Well, I think uh, she would, as any mother, I hope, would... I mean, she would be the first to at least try to understand what's motivating him, what's concerning him, what's upsetting him. From my observation, Harry is upset, he's angry about the way the two most important women in his life have been treated, his mm. wife and his mother. Mm. Uh, now, you can disagree with that or, or debate whether he's right or wrong, but that's how he strikes me. He's an angry man. Um, and I'm sure that Diana, who had a, you know, an unconditional, unbounded love for her children, but had her own experience, too, of dealing with hostile media, um, difficult royal family, a lot of difficult personal choices, uh, I think she is greatly missed, not just by Prince Harry. I mean, it's ironic, isn't it, Richard? Because you say, if we could bring Diana back, mm. what would she think? But, of course, a huge part of what Harry feels and his grievance... Oh, precisely, yeah. ..is because she yeah. died. Yeah. And she died as the car <clears throat> was being chased by paparazzi on, on bikes. Yes, and she died because she had entrusted her safety to people who were not competent mm. to look after her. Mm. We shouldn't forget that. I was at the inquest. Mm. Uh, it's not the paparazzi, it's how you deal with no, the paparazzi. No, I know that, but that's what Prince Harry feels. Yeah. He, he, he feels that because she was being chased by paparazzi... They killed her. That, that, ..that her death was the result of... Yeah. that. That's part of his grievance, isn't it? That's I'm sure it is. That's part of what is so, such a lingering... Well, that's what her brother it. said on the day that she died. Yeah. I, I always f feared that the press would kill her, and they have. Yes. That's, that's how he saw it, and probably yeah. still does. Yeah. Fascinating um, talking to you. It's so good to talk to you. Thank, Thank you very you. much indeed. Um, Owen, enjoy Saturday. He's practising the proclamation. I mean, yeah. He's practising it so he can say it off by heart. No, he's are you going his to be, to his boss. Are you going to be one of the visitors to France on Saturday? Maybe I will. Sense? Maybe I'll do that. I'll start singing the Marseillaise instead. <laughs> um, are you actually going to do it, though, Andrew? Because it is a bit cringe. Come on, I'm, even you. I'm, I'm going to keep you all in suspense. Oh, we'll find out uh, when you will. we report on the coronation because we're live at Westminster Abbey this Saturday for a very special Good Morning Britain coronation show, kicking off the whole day of coverage on ITV from six o'clock in the morning. Do join us. An incredibly special day.